Welcome back. In this video, we'll look again at running molecular dynamics simulations in LAMPS, but we're going to take a closer look at the LAMPS input file and see how to actually set up LAMPS to run a molecular dynamics simulation. So first of all, you'll need the input script for LAMPS. So back on the nanoscale page, you can scroll down to the LAMPS tutorial and to the compression one, and you can get this code here. I'm going to use a slightly modified version, but I'll point out uh, where I made the modification so that you can use a similar one. One thing before we move on, I want to point another thing out. So back on the nanoscale page and scrolling down to LAMPS code under molecular dynamics codes, there's a link to the LAMPS documentation. The LAMPS documentation is actually very thorough and it has a list of all the commands in LAMPS all the fixes in LAMPS and all the computes in LAMPS, as well as a lot of other things that you can see here. It is a very good resource to have when you're starting to run or starting to write a, uh, a LAMPS input. Okay, let's move on to the actual input script then. So first of all, what are we looking at here? A LAMPS input script is made up of a series of different commands that LAMPS will run that will either set up or run something in LAMPS. Comments are specified with these hash marks so that we can annotate these commands. So this is a comment, and then these are four different commands, on one on each line. So in this video, we're going to focus on this first section here, and we're going to um, see what we need to do to set lamps up. So this first command is a units command. We need to tell lamps what kind of units we're going to run in. Metal is the pretty common one uh, for a lot of material science applications. And it's one that we have to use for meme. The dimensions, we typically want to work in three dimensions. Um, that's pretty standard. Then boundaries. We also need to specify the boundaries on our simulation cell. Now we have three choices for boundaries. We can do periodic, we can do fixed, or we can do shrink wrapped. In a periodic boundary, when an atom goes through the boundary, it'll actually reappear on the opposite face. For a fixed boundary, when an atom goes through the boundary, it will actually disappear. It will go out of the simulation cell and will no longer be tracked. For a shrink-wrapped boundary, boundary, when the atom tries to go through the boundary, the boundary will actually expand and until it, it captures all the atoms. Now, so in this case, we've specified uh, periodic boundary conditions by using P and we've specified it periodic in all three directions. So we have periodic in the X, periodic in the Y, and periodic in the Z. Finally, we need to specify what kind of simulation we're running. And we're running an atomistic simulation, so we'll set the atom style to atomic. And that's here. LAMPS actually has the ability to run simulations on different kinds of rigid bodies as well. All right. Now there's another capability of LAMPS in the input file that I'd like to point out here. We can set up variables so that we can uh, define certain quantities that we'll use over and over again in the script. For example, I've set up two here. The first one is for the lattice parameter and the second one is for the material. Now the basic structure of a variable command is the word variable and then the name of the variable that we want to create then the style of the variable, in this case equal, and then the value of the variable. So here I've set up a variable called lat param, and it's an equal style variable, and it has a value of 3.61. These equal style variables are typically used for numerical values. On the second line, you can see I've set up another variable called material, and it is a string style variable, and it has a value of cu. So these string style variables are very handy for doing file names or material names or something like that. And so you can see that I'll use this later um, to specify what material I'm doing. Okay, so now let's actually create the atoms that we want to uh, simulate. 
This next section is all about that. So first, we need to set up what kind of lattice and what size of lattice we're going to create. Now copper is an FCC, uh, has an FCC crystal structure, naturally, and it has a 3.61 lattice parameter. So I'm going to set up this lattice to be an FCC and have the lattice parameter. And so this is how you'd actually use one of the variables that you'd specified. The dollar sign and then curly braces around the name. So this will put in 3.61 and use that as the lattice parameter. Now the reason why we need to set up the lattice first is because uh, all the subsequent geometry commands in LAMPS will actually create the geometry relative to the lattice parameter size. So when we go on to the region command, we're going to create this region in units of the lattice parameter. So now we want to create a box for our simulation cell. So this is the command that we use, region. This is going to create a geometric region in, uh, in LAMPS. So we're going to create a region and we're going to call it whole. So this is just the name that we're going to give it. So this can be anything, but we're going to call it whole because it's the whole system. And we're going to make it a block. This is a specific kind of geometry um, in LAMPS that tells it what kind of geometry we're trying to create. And so a block is just a, a rectangular um, prism or something like that. And so we say that we want to go from 0 to 10 in the x, 0 to 10 in the y, and 0 to 10 in the z direction. And again, these are in terms of the lattice parameter, so this is actually 0 to 36.1, 0 to 36.1, etc. in angstroms. So now we have this block, and we want to tell LAMPS that this block is actually our whole simulation cell. And so we use this command here, create box. So this create box will actually specify whatever region we give it as the simulation cell. So we're going to tell it that there's going to be one kind of atom and we're going to use this region whole as our simulation cell. Okay, so now we have a simulation cell, but we don't have any atoms yet. So then we want to define another, we'll define the lattice again. So we repeat this command, but this time you can see we have additional arguments. Now these three orient arguments actually allow us to specify the crystal orientation of the structure. Now it turns out that we're just giving it the defaults, uh, x in the 100, y in the 010, and z in the 001, but we could change this up and say x in the 010 or something like that, and we can get a different, crisp, you know, different crystal orientation. Finally, now that we've specified what crystal orientation we want, we use the create atoms. And so this is saying let's create atoms of the first type, and we're going to fill up the region called whole. So that's what those commands mean. We're going to create num the atom type number one, which is our only atom in this case, our only type of atom in this case, and we're going to use the region that's called whole. So now we've filled up that region with atoms, with this crystal structure and this crystal um, orientation. Okay, so now we have all these atoms, and we've set up our boundaries and all that, but we need to tell LAMPS how these atoms interact with each other, and that's where we set up the interatomic potential. As I mentioned earlier and in the previous video, we're going to be using a meme potential for this one. So we change this pair style to meme. Now the way we specify what potential we want for a meme potential is on this next line, pair coefficients, or pair coif. Each kind of pair style has its own method of specifying the potential, and this is what we need for the meme potential. First we have two stars. That's basically because these arguments aren't, aren't used by meme. Next, we have a library file. Now this is actually shipped with LAMPS, uh, a basic one, but this could also be um, a, a library file that you have generated yourself if you're creating a potential. So in this library file, there can be a list of, of uh, parameters for a lot of different materials. So we need to tell LAMPS we want to look for this, this material in this library file.
And you notice again, I'm using a variable here. So it's going to look for a variable that is the, it's going to look for a material that is the value of this variable. So again, this CU is just going to get copied here. And so it's going to look for copper inside this library file. Now there's another file that meme needs to get the rest of its parameters. And that is the parameter file, it's actually called. And it's typically specified by the material symbol, so for example, cu dot meme. So again, uh, this one actually ships with lamps, and there's a couple other that do as well. Um, but again, this might be a parameter file that comes from a potential that you're creating. So again, I'm using my um, my material variable so that I can change the material if I wanted to. And finally we say that my number one atom is copper. And so that's that's where we're gonna put this one here. If we had a couple different kinds of atoms, then the order that we put them after this on the end is the order in which they're numbered. So if we had a material here, that's number one. If we had a material here, that's number two, etc. But in this case, we only have one type of atom, so it's pretty simple. So with that, we've actually set up all we really need to do as far as uh, as far as setup to run the molecular dynamics simulation. But there's one more thing that I want to cover, and that is these things called computes. And essentially, computes are ways of telling lamps to compute different properties that it wouldn't otherwise compute. For example, maybe we want to know the potential energy at each atom. This is, that's what this compute tells it to do. So the format of any compute is compute, the name of the compute variable that we want to store this compute in, the group of atoms that we want to perform this compute on, and the type of compute. Additionally, there may be other options or uh, parameters that we need to give uh, lamps to calculate that compute. In this case, for potential energy, it doesn't need any, it doesn't need any parameters. So we're going to store the potential energy of each atom in a compute called per atom, and we're going to run that on all the atoms. So this will do it for each atom, it will find the potential energy. Similarly, we're also going to store the stress for each atom. This compute can optionally take a, a temperature compute that will help it disassociate the temperature from the stress. But we're just going to use the default temperature compute, so we put a null instead of that. So again, we're going to calculate this for all the atoms, and then we're going to store this in a variable, a compute variable called virial, because it's a virial stress. All right, so with that, we've actually set up everything we want to do um, to run a, a simple molecular dynamic simulation in LAMPS. In the next video, we'll start to look at how we actually run these simulations. See you then.